Hey guys, welcome to Reboot, our student podcast. As you know, we were back live on campus on Wednesday. Some of y'all were here. We appreciate you hanging out with us. But we're going to keep doing Reboot for those who can't make it to campus yet or just those who want to go a little deeper and continue to grow their faith. So we're going to keep doing this every week. We'll be posting it a little bit later in the week because you'll be here on Wednesdays, but uh, it'll just be a chance to, to go deeper in God's Word. And since we are kind of switching it up a little bit um, with us being back on campus, we're going we're gonna to switch books of the Bible. Well, we've been doing Joshua. We've been through the first nine chapters of Joshua. But because we're back and we kind of want to show a difference, we're going to go to First Peter starting next week. But we're going to finish Joshua up this week, uh, really, which is not a bad thing because, like, Joshua 13 through 22 is actually kind of boring. Um, <laughs> Covering 14 chapters today. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it is. It's kind of like yeah. telling people about a map with no pictures. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, we'll talk about that. But anyway, so this will be our last week in Joshua. And really, we've hit the high points, and we're going to finish out today. And then we'll go to First Peter next week. And that's a great book with a lot of really good stuff. But before we get into it, let's go ahead and pray. You ready? Let's mm-hmm. pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day and this time. We thank you for all your gifts, for all your blessings, for your love, for your grace. Lord, we thank you for letting us come back to church and just continuing to bless us through this whole experience and just help, help, we pray that you help us grow in it and know you better through it. Lord, we just love you for all you do. We pray you continue to guide us and lead us over these summer months. And again, Lord, just draw us closer to you in all we do. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys. So like we said, we're going to move away from Joshua. So as you think about Joshua's chapter 1 through 9. It's crazy we've been through that much. But as you think about Joshua chapter 1 through 9, what what jumps out? What stands out? What what what's in your mind? Yeah, well, so first it's kind of uh sort of the whole reason why I wanted to go into Joshua in the first place and just kind of explore um the fact that you know God is so faithful and always keeps his promises. And I feel like that's really clear throughout Joshua. The main thing that kind of stuck out to me was back in week one, whenever um, we went over chapter one, and that uh, Joshua 1 9, be strong and courageous, mm-hmm. uh, for God is always with you, man. Like, you know, especially at the time as as Corona was ramping up back then, but you know, like even now looking back, um, how you know God's always with us, and that's something that we can even look forward to in the future. Whenever, um, you know, whenever we face uh, different encounters and different struggles and things like that. Right. No, that's really good, and and I mean it's crazy. It has been about ten weeks, but a lot has changed in ten weeks, mm-hmm. and we're not where we were. But where we were, we needed to be reminded God is with us and, and He's guiding us. We need to be reminded that every day, but especially then. Yeah. So um, we kind of skipped one thing. As I was looking back, we kind of skipped one little story in chapter 5 that I love. Uh, as Joshua was getting ready for the Battle of Jericho, he meets the commander of the Lord's army. And he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know he's an angelic commander. <laughs> he just thinks he's some dude. And he comes up to him and he says, are you for us or against us? And the commander of God's army says, neither. And I love that because what he's saying is, it's not about you. It's about being on God's side, right? It's not whether I'm on your side or the other side. It's whether you are on God's side. And I think that subtleness is really important for students and and for all Christians that sometimes we think just because we follow Christ, he's going to bless our lives, even when we're not doing his will. And it's not about God being for us, which he is, Mm -hmm. but it's about us being for God. And so when you think about that, how is that important for our students? Yeah, it's such an ownership thing, um, I feel like, for students. Uh, So it's important because it forces us to to take ownership of our actions um, and realizing that our actions do have consequences. We talked about that last week or the week Mm -hmm. before, but um, that, you know, our actions have consequences, good or bad. and an example I kind of thought about was watching The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan documentary. Um, the segment that they talked about Isaiah Thomas not being on the 1992 uh, Dream Team, you know, like he was kind of a jerk in Detroit and, you know, a lot of the league did not like him, so they didn't want to play with him on the Olympic team. And so, you know, his uh, actions, the way he acted, uh, losing to the mm-hmm. Bulls and just kind of uh, arrogant, I guess, you know, that kind of those actions had negative consequences and made him miss out on a great opportunity to play for his country. And um, so then it's realizing, you know, for us that, you know, like our attitude and that our choices and our decision, you know, has everything has a consequence. And um, then it's also taking a step back and realizing that God has a plan for us and it's a perfect plan. And we just have to be willing to follow God. You know, it's not necessarily easy. You know, it's not easy to do 
God's plan, but it's something that's very, very necessary for us. And I can't remember if, if it was the Seahawks or who the Broncos lost to, and Peyton Manning walked off without shaking a hand. Yeah. And he caught mm-hmm. a lot of flack for it. But then he came back and apologized, said, no, nah, yeah. I was wrong, I was frustrated, whatever. And so, again, sometimes we got to come back and say, yeah. you know, try to make up for those consequences. But they're still there. Yeah. Well, and even for me, like, getting a little off topic, but even there's been so many times whenever I've lost a basketball game or I didn't play my best or whatever, and we're, like, in line shaking hands. I'm not even – like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just, like, walking right past everyone right. or, like – just kind of ignoring them but you know like that's just like that's not where you want right. to be you know right. so all right so in chapter 10 like we've said we've been through the first nine chapters chapter 10 and nine we saw the alliance all the canaanite uh countries formed an alliance to come against uh joshua and the israelites and one of the cool things that happened in chapter 10 is joshua's battling this alliance of six kings and he's got them on the run the sun's going down and he knows if the sun goes down they're going to escape and it won't end the alliance. So he actually prays to God. I mean, talk about crazy prayer. He says, hey, God, could you stop the sun for a little while so I could catch these guys? And God does exactly that. He holds the sun for for an extra 24 hours in the sky to give Joshua enough time to catch the, the Canaanite kings and destroy them and, mm-hmm. and basically clear out the, the promised land. But when you think about that, God stopping the sun, I mean, obviously that's not something we probably should pray for, but <laughs> when you think about that, what what does that tell you about God giving us what we need when we need it? Yeah, so God's always going to give us what we need, um, but it just, on our side, it requires us to have faith, requires us to have trust in God, and to go, go back to the first question that, you know, like God's plan for us is perfect, and so he's going to give us what we need when we when we need it but also for us it kind of requires us to take a step back and see the bigger picture and um you know it's kind of funny me and my well me and my whole family watched this movie called greater it's about an arkansas razorback uh football player that got killed in a car accident but anyways um it is a like true story but anyways like at his funeral um his brother is down on the football field and sees all these flowers getting set on the football field and he thinks it's like stupid and like whatever he's kind of ignoring it and then at the finally at the end of the movie he goes upstairs like to where the funeral reception thing is and he like sees how pretty the flowers are and like sees the message it says like we love you or something like that and so you no, know, like in the middle of everything, he's not able to see like how how great the flowers look or how beautiful they are. But it's until like he takes a step back and he sees, you know, like the the final picture, I guess. And um, I think that's so true with us and with what God is doing in our life. You know, so many times we look at it just from a like right here, right now perspective instead of taking a step back and like, oh, you know, God did this because He's preparing me for this reason or whatever. So. Yeah. Uh, that's really good. God sees the whole picture, and He's given us what we need. And until usually, until we're through it, we don't get to look yeah. back and mm-hmm. see the whole picture. Yeah. So I like that. But the other thing does Joshua is very bold in this prayer. I mean, he's like, God, oh, stop absolutely. the sun. I want, I want to, I want to catch these guys, not for his own personal gain, but to end this and, and allow Israel to have the promised land. So when you think about that, like sometimes our culture, we think God can only save our souls. We put God in like this really small box of like this is all God can do, and really sometimes it's what we're saying is this is all I'll let God do. But when you think about that, um, what does this story tell you about the power of God in in our lives too? Yeah. Well, I think it tells us that, you know, God's not a little genie that we should go to and ask for three wishes or whatever it is, you know, but um, that, you know, like, first of all, you know, he's the creator of the universe. He's this powerful being that, you know, we place our faith and our trust in and, um, you know, so like I think we need to to treat God like that. You know, not just ask Him for a little stuff, but like you said just a second ago, be bold in like mm-hmm. what you are asking for, and be bold in uh, in even your faith towards Him, and like be bold in following God each and every day. So, well, and I think you just hit on part of it too. It's not that God is not powerful and won't give us stuff. The the Bible says what we pray in Jesus' name. And, and if we're asking for something selfish, we're not praying in Jesus' name. We're praying in our own name. We're mm-hmm. praying for... So Joshua's not asking for himself. And so, yeah, we need to be bold, but we need to be bold for God. And our prayers should somehow be for the kingdom, for the world, for people, not just, hey, I want a Lamborghini. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, that's, that's a little selfish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, so the so Joshua catches the, the kings. They defeat them. They run all the Canaanites out of the promised land. It's finally... Um, 
finally Israel's promised land. And then literally, I'm not kidding. You should read it because we should read the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. But 13 through 22 is all how Joshua divides up the promised land amongst the 12 tribes of Israel. But before, you know, I don't want to just skip over that because there's some important stuff in there, like the fulfillment of the promise that God made Abraham back in Genesis 15. Like, hey, I'm going to give you this land. You're going to be the father of many nations. So that promise comes a long time ago. Now we're finally seeing it fulfilled. So two questions that kind of uh, jump into my mind is, first, what do you think about the faithfulness of God that we see in these chapters? Yeah, so I think it's just realizing that, that you know, once again, God is faithful all the time. He is true to his promises all the time, you know, but it's just not, it's not on our watch. It's on, it's on God's watch. So, you know, I feel like a lot of times we get frustrated or, you know, like have the mindset of, oh God, like, what are you doing right here? You know, like you're supposed to, um, you know, like intervene or whatever, mm -hmm. but you know, it, it takes patience on us and it takes us knowing, you know, that God has the plan for us. God has the timing down mm -hmm. pat. And it's also, um, you know, going through this has kind of also taught me, you know, like how small we are, but how important we are, you know, so like God uses each one of us, you know, like the same way that he uses Joshua, but you know, like Joshua is a, is a small piece, like in the big scheme right. of things, he was a small piece in a great big mission that God had. So yeah. uh, that's very good. And, and so the second question there that kind of comes to mind is before. The, uh, the prayer was the promised land. God gives it to them, but they've got to get rid of the Canaanites. So what does that kind of teach us about our own prayer lives and, and what we should expect when God answers prayers? Yeah, so I think it's that, you know, God does answer our prayers, but it's for us to be um, just constant in our prayers. And so, you know, don't take, a, don't take days off of praying, mm -hmm. you know, like it should be something that you're doing every day, continually interacting with God, but also... Um, you know, like be, be specific in what you're praying for and be specific with your thoughts with God. And like, you know, like, uh, I feel like it helps me a lot more whenever, you know, I'm praying, I'm being specific about, you know, like what, you know, like what I need help with or what, you know, like I'm asking God. So, and I think that's kind of like what Joshua was doing all throughout here yeah. as well. And then sometimes God's going to answer our prayers and it may require something of us, mm -hmm. you know, like Joshua, you, you're going to yeah. get the promised land, but you got to clear it out first. Yeah. And, and so don't just think that if there is an act that goes with it, it's not God's answer. Yeah. All right. So we get, we go through 22 and then 23, 24, the really famous chapters where Joshua has given his farewell speech uh, to the people of Israel. And the first one, he kind of, he, he talks about God setting two paths before him. And, you know, if you go to path of righteousness, you're going to be blessed. It's going to be good. If you go against God's blessings, you go against God's command, you go against God's law, you're going to be cut off. He literally says, you're going to be like, what happened to the Canaanites is what's going to happen to you. And we actually later see that. But when you think about that concept of two paths, and Jesus talked about it, there's the narrow path, which we're supposed to be on in the path of the world. But when you think about those two paths set before us, what, what can our students do to help stay on the right path or to even find the right path? Yeah. And I know, like, I know we've talked about this before, but we will keep talking about it, but it's just the importance of accountability. Like that is so important. So like to find, to find people that are on the right path, to find, you know, leaders that you can trust and to, um, you know, like for, if you're like, you know, watching a leader or whatever, watch mm -hmm. them and like see, you know, how they're growing and like what they're doing. And then for you to do the same thing, but to just have that accountability with your friends mm -hmm. and to, you know, do Bible studies with each other and um, just stay in God's word with each other. But also it requires you to be truthful to God with what's going on. Um, because, you know, sometimes you can get, you know, you can lie to yourself and you can lie to God about like mm -hmm. what's going on and you can try and hide stuff. And, you know, we see throughout the Bible that that's not really a good right. thing. And that can also get you off, off of the right path. So no, that's, that, that's very true. And, and so, you know, you think about it too. I think one of the things Joshua kind of shows us, one of the things Jesus definitely shows us is the wrong path is a lot easier than the right path. Mm -hmm. And we've got to work for it. And like you said, accountability or something. But if we don't do anything, we're going to be pushed to the wrong path. 
So if we're going to choose the right path, we've got to do those things like accountability, yeah. read the scriptures, come mm-hmm. to church, yeah. the things you mentioned. What's really interesting too, um, this is a, kind of a visual that I always saw growing up in student ministry and stuff, but where you kind of talk about this accountability thing. So, you know, you get a chair and um, one person stands up on the chair and then the other person is standing on the floor. And it's a lot easier for the person who's on the ground to pull you down mm-hmm. than it is for you to pull the person up. Like you're not going to be strong enough to pull right. the person up. Um, and so I think that's so true too of our walk with, with Christ of how, you know, it's so easy for people to pull us down. And especially if we're not fighting, if we're not fighting back, they're going to pull us down no matter what. But like, whenever that does happen, we have to at least, at least try and hold our ground. So that's a really good, I like that visual. I've seen that Mm -hmm. before. That's a good visual. All right. So then Joshua gives them the two paths and he makes the, the famous, um, statement or famous verse, uh, as for me and my family, me and my household, we will choose to serve the Lord. Um, as you think about that, like sometimes, especially with summer coming up, camp season, whatever, sometimes we can think like, oh, I made this decision. I'm done. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I accepted Christ in my heart and we need to make that step, but I'm done. And it's not done. As Joshua says, this day, my family's going to choose to serve the Lord, my household. It's a daily dying and rising to Christ Jesus. So what do you think that daily dying and rising or that daily commitment or that daily following Christ looks like in our students' lives? Yeah, it's it's something that has to be 24-7. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to recognize the need for a Savior and the role that Jesus plays in that. Um, and I, I just think it's so important to have that mindset of being a Christian all the time, of of wanting God all the mm-hmm. time. Um, you know, uh, the, like there's this motivational speech out there where it talks about like, you know, how bad you want to be successful. And the uh, guy compares being successful to like the need to want to breathe. And um, I kind of think about like so many times I've thought about that speech or that like motivational uh, video of, you know, like our need for a savior as well. You know, like we, we need a savior as bad as we, as we need to breathe. And I think that's the way we should live with that urgency. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, like uh, a few ways that that looks like is by being invested. So being invested in your friends, being invested in your prayer life, mm-hmm. being invested in what God is doing in your life. Um, and just, uh, different situations around you. So I think that's really important. That's very good. Uh, it, John Piper, pretty famous pastor, but he's got a, one of his most well-known sermons in it. He, he, he's kind of mocking people to a bit. He's like, people are saying, well, why am I this way? Or why am I doing it? And he, his point is you got to make war against sin. You can't just mm-hmm. think it's going to go away. You got to make war and go against it. And I think that's what you're saying. It's just yeah. like, if you want to fight for that breath, you got to fight against the sin. And you talk about being invested. So speaking of invested, yes, sir. there we go. Summer camp. Let's go. So um July 6th through 10th we're doing an invested camp here in Jacksonville. Unfortunately, we couldn't go up to um Fuge this summer because of corona and everything. So so we're doing it in Jacksonville. We're looking at some uh hotels around the area just for a good fit and everything. But um July 6th through 10th, uh it's $250 a student. And you can go ahead and sign up right now. There's been some emails that have gone out and some text messages that have gone out with the links and everything. But um, we're calling this camp invested because we're not we're investing in you guys as as you guys grow and stuff. But we're also it's also meant for you guys to invest in the younger generation because we're gonna be doing some things around the church, um, helping out with the children's ministry. And I think that's such a great way for us to um, to invest in the next generation. Even though you know our students here are the next generation, there's always someone younger that you can pour into, and it's really getting in that idea of um, discipleship. So, yeah. and then also um, just the idea of being invested in each other. So you know, building friendships with each other. Uh, that's such a great week to do it in the year is to do it during camp week. Right. So, so you'll be staying at a hotel, spending mm-hmm. the night yep. serving at the children's yep. camp during mm-hmm. the day. Now, um, if people made a deposit for Fuge, is mm-hmm. that transfer over? Yeah. They need to let you know. Yeah. Or? Yes. No. So the deposit for Fuge transfers over. Okay. So, um, so far we have, we have a few people signed up. So, and then we got some, uh, got some mass texts and emails sent out earlier today to to get some more people signed up so we're in good shape is it on the website yet mm-hmm. i know i don't if it's not it's coming i don't know oh, yeah it is I, it, it is. is it is so they check it out on the website <laughs> yeah. um and and get all the information but mm-hmm. it's going to be a good camp and it's going to obviously center kid fuge 
all Lifeway canceled all camps across the board. So this mm-hmm. is at least a way to continue to have camp, the camp experience just in our own backyard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. All right, so as we wrap up Joshua, anything stand out, anything jump in your mind, anything that you think is important? Yeah, Um. so as far as stuff being important, just the continually knowing that, you know, God's always with you and – that, you know, like even through um, different times of trials and stuff, you know, God is with you and God has a perfect plan for you. And it just uh, kind of uh, you have to recognize, you know, the call of obedience and you have to act on on what God is calling you to do. So that's I think awesome. that's really important. That's awesome. And I love the book of Joshua. Yeah. And we're yeah. not we're, we're just moving just to kind of. I mean, 10 weeks is a long oh, time yeah. to be in yeah, one book. Absolutely. So it's just to give something new and something different. But mm-hmm. hey, make sure, again, if you're if you're on Instagram, you're following our Instagram channel. You can see it on the bottom of the screen um, to stay up with Brian's devotions and just the latest information. Mm-hmm. Also, if you're interested in the, the invest, you can text Brian, email Brian, check it out on the website. But it's going to be an awesome camp. We definitely want as many people to be a part of it as can. Um, and other than that, if we hope to see you back on campus soon, uh, if you're not already back, and, but we'll keep doing this for a while just to make sure that there's always something for everybody to be growing in their faith. So you guys take care, have an awesome week, and we will see you soon. See ya.